Like, why would they pick me? But, you know, then I heard a voice say, man, why wouldn't they? Then it start, you start getting some confidence. Like, why wouldn't they? You know, yeah. you know what you're doing. And what's the most unique thing to my journey that I tell everybody is that I'm probably the only CEO you're going to ever meet that doesn't have a college degree. It's time to pivot in your confidence, career, and compensation with the 5-Minute Career Hack Podcast every Monday and Thursday. Now, get ready for a special interview curated just for you. Welcome back to another insightful episode of the 5-Minute Career Hack Podcast. Each week, we are giving you hacks to help you pivot in your confidence, career, and compensation. And this week is no different. We are sharing space with business leaders that have humbly been willing to share their professional journey with us in the communities we serve. But before we hop in, you know I'm going to remind you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be notified of every time we drop a new episode, which I know you heard me say it every single week. So today I'm thrilled to introduce our esteemed guest, Kedrick Jeffries, who brings a wealth of experience in youth development as the chief executive officer for Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Central Texas. With a career that is dedicated to empowering young minds, Kedrick's leadership at organizations like the Boys and Girls Club of Austin and communities and schools of Central Texas has made a profound impact on countless lives. Today, we are going to delve into his journey, exploring the intersection of mentorship, leadership, and community impact. Kedrick, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes, yes. So I'm excited for today's uh, chat that we're going to have. I know I dropped yeah. a couple of big gems of what your journey has looked like, but nobody tells their story <laughs> better than that person, right? So tell us about you and your career journey. How did you arrive here with us today? Oh, man, how I got here, uh, kind of by happenstance, actually. Uh, think, you know, things fall into place uh, the way they do. Uh, it all started. This is how my life got turned upside down. I mean, you know, um, so 2004, um, I was in Dallas, Texas, and uh, I had just had my first child. And um, I was like, I got to provide. You know, I, I got a kid now. Like I can't be just out here winging it and, and doing things. So uh, I knew if I came back to Austin, because I'm from Austin, and, you know, I could get on my feet pretty quick and, you know, start to be able to provide. Now I have somebody dependent on me. And so it happened to be that um, that I, I got a job at Communities and Schools. Uh, you know, it's good to know people. I will say that, that open doors for you. I had somebody open a door for me. And I went to go work for communities and schools in a, in a pilot kind of project thing for um, young males or high school males. It was called the XY Zone. And uh, the beauty of that is that I was able to go work in my old high school that I graduated from. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so uh, I was going into it just as a job, honestly. Uh, it was something to get me on my feet. Uh, and, uh, but, it, it's nothing like being able to give back to your community or to, but to really do it in the same hallways and, and in the same zip code, the same community that you grew up in, it, it, it has extra value to it. Mm -hmm. uh, at least uh, for, for me, it did. And uh, so I did that for a couple of years and really was like, okay, I kind of like it. I used to think I wanted to be a teacher actually. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but I quickly learned in my time at the high school and working there uh, that uh, maybe I don't like to be a teacher as much as I thought. I still like working with youth. Yeah. Maybe I didn't want to be a teacher. So uh, because naturally uh, in the world of nonprofits and pilot projects and funding and grants, the grant ran out two years ago, so I had to go <clears throat> find some more employment. And uh, and so I, the next opportunity I had was working in the after school space uh, for Austin ISD uh, at Aikens High School way out south. And uh, I was doing after school programming there. And I was like, OK, this is this is my lane. I like working with kids and making an impact on youth, but I didn't want to be in the classroom, but I'll get to have. So it's like the things that teachers want to do 
um, with students to really impart in them. And so I get to do that with all out without having to worry about teaching to a test yeah. and doing some of those other things that, and the red tape and, you know, the teachers deal with and referrals because after school kids come, they want to be there, especially in high school, right? Because uh, they have so many options. So if they come in after school, it's because they want to be there. You're offering something that they want to be involved in. Uh, did that for a few years and then went to, but it's a grant. So it ran out, right? And yeah. so uh, I went to go work at AISD at another school uh, as a behavior support specialist uh, in elementary. And that's when I realized I don't think I really like elementary kids that much. Um, uh, and, but Be ready, y'all, today. Be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's going to get raw. It's going to be straight. Uh, but I realized, like, oh, yeah, I don't really think I, I like this. And then, see, when you do an after-school program, you got to get to work to 10. You mm -hmm. leave at 6. When you work at elementary school, you got to be there at 7. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't really that type of, yeah, early morning riser guy. Anyway, so doing that. And so I did that for a few, you know, for some time. And then my next thing in, in the in the school world, uh, and working with youth, I went to Pflugerville ISD mm -hmm. and went back to high school and run an after school programming. And uh, so I was like, yeah, this is my, this is it. This is who I need to be, you know, and so really kind of sharpening my skills. But again, and I'll say this as far as career, it helps to know people to open doors for you. It so happened that um, I was needing a job and I just was like looking for a job similar to that and saw Pflugerville had it. I called the principal up and the principal at the school actually was a mentor of mine when I was in high school. Yeah. And so I hadn't seen him since I was in the 10th grade. Hadn't talked to him. I called him. I was like, hey, I know you don't remember me, but I need a job. You know, I see you got this thing. This is what I do. And like sight unseen, he was like, the job's yours, pretty much, wow. right? Wow. And, you know, and so relationship, you know, that's a key. And a lot of times I'm learning, they always say it's not what you know, it's who you know. And who knows you. And, and who knows you and and, and the and the um the impression you have left on them yeah. when they first knew you, right? So to speak. So that worked in my favor. I did that. And then all of us, you know, in two thousand and twelve, um, the world in the school world in Texas, at least there was a big funding thing and people get let go. Yada, yada, yada. So I was a victim of that because they gonna cut teachers. They gonna cut like the adjunct programs and stuff. Right. So I was, you know, one of those things. And what did I do next? Oh yeah. I took, I was like, all right, you know what? Maybe I'm done with schools, school. Cause I'll be in these grants and this, you know, stuff like then I got to find yeah. something else after a few years. So I, I took a stab at, and it's, uh, changing jobs somewhat. I went to work for a labor union um, and I was traveling all over the country, um, helping people still gain access in the workplace, getting fair uh, and equitable treatment uh, mm -hmm. in that. But what it did though, it really took me all over the country, put me in different walks of life, different um, areas of the country that were not like the South. You know, I was up in the North and, you know, learning different walks of life but that i look back now see how that paid dividends for me being able to have conversations with people uh like that is total strangers but having something relative to talk about to establish a commonality to have uh, a mutual beneficial conversation yeah uh did that and it was great job paid great great benefits i mean i pr probably still would be doing it honestly <laughs> <laughs> but I was a parent and I mean, when it was a hundred percent travel and like, I'm like living out of my, my vehicle, uh, so to speak, uh, because it was a 300th day of the year. I remember this and I've been in a hotel 286 days. Wow. And so I was like, yeah, I gotta get back home. You can't be a dad over zoom or it was FaceTime back then, yeah. uh, yeah. He's talking about over 10 years ago. And I was like, man, I need a job. And, uh, so I was, I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I started looking for jobs back in Austin, yada, yada. Found one at the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, and I remember it wasn't paying nothing. I was like, I need something to get on my feet and uh, just get back. So I got back here and started. And again, just God lined it up so that I was in a community and the site that I was managing um, was literally uh, 
the next zip code over from the zip code I grew up in. It was still in the, the feeder school to the high school I went to, right? And so it, it I went into it like, okay, these are still my people. Mm-hmm. This is a community that I know. So I knew I, I said, let me manage this and make this and um make this be as successful as it can be, uh, because of I know who is representing. Uh, sometimes that community is so underrepresented, underserved, mm. uh, underfunded, under everything, right? Right. Um, it can be under the thumb of, yeah. of you know different um, policies yeah. and 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 s- systemic things. Yeah. Uh, and so my goal was to to do that. And so I was really content, like just chilling. Um, I really had no dreams of being in upper management or definitely being senior management because. If you're on the bottom of the pole, you the, you know the frontline staff. All you do is talk about the people at the top. You like they don't know what they doing. They so stupid. They just like they like. Why would they do that? Don't they know? It's like the I used to say, and I used to say it. The higher you got on the on the you know on the ladder, the dumber the people got. Now and now I'm like, hmm, hmm. Uh, I'm like, how the tables have staff. turned for you? Yeah, I'm like, I know my staff be. <laughs> Driving about me and all that, you know, but but uh so I did that, but I was just sitting in the cut, just working my job, and then I started, but what happens is as you mature, um I was a now I was an old head, you know, as a as a director versus some of the, the young ones they would get coming out of college and and you know, stretch out, you know, I would see them like gripe about stuff. Yeah. Uh like that. I was like, you don't know, like, what's out there for real. Like, this is a pretty easy job. You come to work at 10, get off at 6, you're really only working after school, you're getting paid a full-time salary, you get to, you know, it's no stress. I, mean, I used to work for the state, sit in a cubicle for eight hours a day. Like, I've had these jobs. I've carried the mail in rain, sleet, or snow, like in Grapevine. I've done so many jobs, so cars. I've done, so I know. Jack of all trades here. Yeah, so like, I was just telling them, like, hey, y'all gonna shut up. Like, you don't realize how good it is here for y'all messing up for the old head like me anyway. So doing my thing, and I was like, okay, now I'm getting respect. I'm getting noticed by upper management, and they're like, ask me to apply for jobs, you know, move up, move upstairs. Now I'm like, nope, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it because it don't pay enough for the headaches y'all want me to have. Yeah. Because that's just a fact. Like, if you want me to have this headache, pay me for it. Yeah. And, um, so I put that off for some years. Like I interviewed like twice. They offered to me, I turned it down every time. So finally, uh, again, God just start moving things, moving th- things at the job and things in my life. So uh, there was a, the COO at the time, as at the Boys and Girls Club. He was like, Kendrick, man, look, we we need you to move upstairs. Like, and I was like, man, it don't pay enough. And he was like, if I find the amount of amount, amount, right amount of money, will you do it? Like, eh, probably so. Because right, I have realized I did all I could do mm-hmm. at, at my current position. I was grooming other people to come behind me, and which ended up happening. Uh, but I was just more training directors, like training peers and yeah. being a voice than working hard. My systems had been in place for four or five years. It was running itself. My staff knew what to do. I kept the same staff for five years. Like, they just knew. Yeah. You know, I would go to work and be like, they know what to do. I, I mean, same reports I do with the same. Anyway, moving on. So I move upstairs because that happened, right? So now it's weird. I'm like middle management. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm supervising other sites, yada, yada, yada. And I got a couple of bosses. Well, I did that for like three months and uh, came to work one day and the COO let go. Mm-hmm. Well, Just like that. Separation of employment. <laughs> You know, you dress it up. Yeah, they had a separation of employment. And um and so there was a young lady that was in between me and him. And uh so I think you know, she was qualified to be and I was like, Oh, I think I take her job, like managing all the managers, right? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what we were talking about doing. Well, a week later, she was like, Hey, she got us all together, was like, Hey, got some news, I'm finna leave. You mm-hmm. know. And she, you know, she had another job that she been that was really passionate for her in her heart. So she left. So then here come Kim. I'm the next senior guy up. You know, really wasn't trying to be the top dog, 
you know, don't get me wrong, but it just was what it was. It just fell in my lap. God said, Kelly, this is your time, you know? And so here I go from being, you know, just a run of the mill guy to six months later, I'm running my whole department, <laughs> you know? And it's like, you can have that, uh, oh, what's the complex? That syndrome, uh, when you faking it. Imposter syndrome? You, yeah. Huh? Impos imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, yeah, thank you for yes. that. It yeah. was like, I don't believe, I don't deserve to be here. Or I knew people that were smarter than me, or it's like, you know, it's just like, am I supposed to be here trying to, then I'll start thinking about all the meetings I goofed off in, wasn't paying attention, <laughs> and, and policies and procedures I should really know. And I was like, man, I should have paid attention that day. Um, <laughs> Because uh, now I'm having to enforce them, you know, right, and I'm right, having to right. live by them. And I'm really just sitting there like, okay. So the first year was like a whole learning curve. Like yeah. every day I'm like looking over my shoulder or just like worried. But I, I tell you what, the CEO believed in me mm -hmm. to be able to put me there. Uh, mm -hmm. And I guess I made a great enough impression on her that uh, that she, was, she backed my play or my the move and uh, again I'll, I'll and let me back up to tell people out there that there's my journey um i often i must hit them with the nugget at the end of this um okay uh so then I'm, I'm doing that and i'm learning my job now being more successful people are noticing me and noticing our organization and it just became I'm like okay this is this is where i am i'm doing what i'm supposed to do i i can feel that things come naturally uh and it never hurts that i'm doing this um, because I get up every day to go to the mat for for the kids because this is my community that I grew up in. Yes. Um, where the Boys and Girls Club was sits is literally on land that I passed a million times. Yeah. I, I share the same zip code with them uh as a kid. Uh 78723 uh was my zip code growing up. And that's where they sit. And so all the kids in this community, you know, I would go to the schools and they'd be like, Mr. You don't understand. I'm like, no, trust me, I understand. Yeah. I walk these same halls, these same schools, these same streets. I've done everything that you do. You know, I've been a kid and I've been your age, but just not in this age. You're related. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I get it to an extent, you know, but moving on. So I did that and it was a great job. And I think I was doing a good job. And um, then the opportunity came open here uh at the big brothers big sisters of central texas and uh to be ceo and i really you know in an imposter thing again it's like they ain't gonna pick me like why would they pick me but you know then i heard a voice that man why wouldn't they then it start you start getting some confidence like why wouldn't they you know yeah. you know what you're doing um so then i i got the job right so i've been here six months um and what's the most unique thing to my journey that i tell everybody is that I'm probably the only CEO you're going to ever meet that doesn't have a college degree. Yeah. Come on. I, I have, I have a PhD in life experience. There you go. That's a um, degree. But I don't have the degree. And, and, and not that I haven't been to college. Let me say that I've been to college. I didn't finish. Okay. I should finish one day. Honestly, I should finish, but I'm That's a little busy right now. So, <laughs> uh, so, so got a bit job, got me busy right now. Um, but it has made my journey so unique. I think I back on all the experiences I've had between the jobs that I've named and the travels I've had, it all that lined up to prepare me for what I do right now. Absolutely. Uh, to be able to have conversations with people asking for money. And I ain't talking about asking for five dollars. I'm talking about, hey man, I need a hundred thousand dollars. I need a million dollars. You know, but you have but you have to be able to be knowledgeable and be able to stand on what you are selling or promoting to do that. Uh, so that's how I got here. Yeah. Uh, I look back at this journey. Uh, I started off just wanting a job and I found a purpose yeah. uh, through all of that. Yeah. And so uh, there's been a lot of ups and downs in between, uh, but uh, that's how I got here. Yes. No, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm going to ask a question before I make a comment. Yeah. So from the time you started and Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. as a entry level type employee mm -hmm. to the time you were promoted to CEO. What did that time span look like? Uh, 10 years. 
10 years from when you yeah. started to the CEO. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. And it may seem like a long time to some people, but that is actually a very short amount of time. Um, yeah. and, and that was one of the things that I was enticed by when we had our initial conversation of you are modeling and showing people that there doesn't, you don't have to get there the traditional way. And the reason that I really like that you shared your entire story is because sometimes when we have those moments where like, oh, Kedrick is, I remember seeing the announcement when you were announced as the CEO at uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters. I was like, man, that is phenomenal. And some people see that as like a suddenly. But you, talk, you talked about this is how it started and all the things that I experienced along the way, which I think one oh, of those man. key things that I heard was you built great relationships. You yeah. focused on your personal professional development so you can make lasting impressions. And then you saw a lot of those relationships you built circle back to help you oh, get yeah. to that place. Right. Yeah. So just again, thank you for sharing that, because I think especially that I, you work with the youth. And I think I hope that we have an outpouring of youth that are listening to this today that may be um, learning or somebody's telling them that they have to go to college and then they have mm -hmm. to go do this and then they have to go do this yeah. in order to get here. Yeah. You actually have the you have dominion. Let's start with that. But you have more control of your journey by making sure you're aligning yourself with the right people. You remain in a posture of learning and development. Mm -hmm. And then you said while you were talking, I'm trying to I'm trying to hurry up. But you said so much. And I had like 10 points while you were talking. Are you fine? You even said when you went to go be the CEO of Big, uh, no, the COO of Boys and mm -hmm. Girls Club, that you had courage to say, well, this is the money that is going to take in order for me to go there. Mm -hmm. That, again, is a gap that we some I experienced it when I was younger, but definitely the youth that we work with experience. They, they are afraid to ask, don't have the courage to ask because they think that they have to, like, prove yeah. themselves in this different way. And you just displayed that I had courage to ask and it could have been a no, but it was a yes. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's phenomenal. So just again, King, thanks for sharing that, uh, yeah. sharing your journey with us. And, and we appreciate all the work that you're doing in the community as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, oh. uh, it's, um, yeah, I look back, telling that story is just like re remembering all of those things. And one of those other things that I've always tried to do is treat people fair. Yeah. Um, And when you can help somebody else along your journey, uh, don't be that guy like, oh, it's all mine and I ain't finna help you get here. You know, uh, there's guys that I still look out for and make phone calls for all the time um, because people did it for me. Um, you know, it's relationship. Like, so much of this stuff, when you're doing things in your own community or in your own home city, yeah. people can pick up a phone and do a background, an unofficial background check on you uh, and can even move the needle in your favor or away from you. Yeah. Uh, so it's you have to be focused and be cognizant all the time of of your interactions uh in your, in your workspace so but yeah I, I i do try to bring people along and mentor people and um and i and it's never from the uh, traditional educated route i'm always preaching life lessons and and life experiences and how they prepare you for for what you're going to deal with but yeah thank you yeah no you you brought up a just a great point around Again, you said it earlier and you just reiterated it around just the first the first impression that you make and the way you're conducting yourself in certain spaces. Um, and you work with the youth, obviously, in the mentoring mm -hmm. space. So I want to hear yes. a little bit about that. Uh -huh. um, but one of the things that. When I think back on my career, if I had been a little bit more intentional, it would have been around who is specifically my mentor, because I was kind of mm -hmm. in survival mode a little bit like me. I got to got to get the job. I need to make this uh -huh. money. I want to I want to uh -huh. not go back and live in my mom's house. I want to prove myself to all the people who watching what yeah. I'm doing from a leadership standpoint. Yeah. Um, and I can't say that I ha I had mentors and people who brought me with them. But for me to slow down and really embrace and um, embrace the benefits of having a mentor mm -hmm. and like having them help me move along. I, when I go back, I say, OK, I would have probably did that a little differently. But the good news is I get to do it now. So yeah. I said all that to say, because you're in the mentoring space, obviously uh -huh. you were mentored by people. It sounds like a lot of that was also intentional. What hacks for the listeners that uh, may be about to go into college or getting uh -huh. out of college and about to go into their careers, what advice yeah. would you give them from a Kedrick standpoint yeah. and then a big brother, big sister standpoint about how okay. to proper, properly leverage 
a mentor to help you find that purpose a little faster. Right. Okay. Uh, so f- how to pro- how I would tell a young person to to leverage mentorship uh, from from Kedrick's point of view, uh, just Kedrick, the the community guy, uh, find somebody first. Know what you want to be, mm-hmm. uh, or have a goal in mind of what you want to do, where you want to go, or what career aspirations you have, or what your life aspirations are. Yeah, which is that you said what you want to be even before what, what you, you want to do. So yeah, which, who yeah. you want to be or what you want to be is even more important than, yes, oh, I want to know. do this. Love yeah, it that you, you gotta, started with that. And start with yourself, yeah. knowing what you want to be and what you want to attain in life. Uh, and then work work backwards. If you and see, okay, find and then start working the connection avenues. Ask adults all the time, um, do you know a artist do you know a chef do you know and the yes and then, can you introduce me can you can i can i and i found that mo- most people in their profession because truly as adults i just talk frankly like we see these these teens have almost lost mm-hmm. don't know what they so we find a team that truly has an interest in a career especially mm-hmm. the one we're in we're yeah. like oh yeah please bring them to me yeah i would you know um, I'm a and so uh, I, I definitely don't think that somebody, a team would be discouraged for seeking out uh, some guidance or some mentorship from somebody that they aspire uh, to track behind or to come behind uh, or be like, uh, because it's flattering as an adult that somebody wants to be like me as well. That's just human nature. And then also this helps my career down the road as in, in our growth in this field. And that would be first thing uh, I would say uh, from Kedrick, just the guy on the street, uh, the professional me would, I'll, it's still pretty much the same thing. Yeah. You know, if you're at home right now and and you can hear this and you like, oh, I want to, even if you want to be a CEO uh, of an organization, uh, ask one, uh, find people who are even middle managers because they have, um, aspirations to get to wherever ask them what they did uh what classes they took and whatever you know there even though i didn't finish there's still a lot of my education that i still use uh and uh now i'm gonna say i use y equals mx plus b <laughs> uh, pythagorean i don't know yeah i'm not gonna say i use, haven't used algebra since the 10th yeah period. like i'm not gonna say that <laughs> i'm not gonna be like, oh yeah you're gonna use that trigonometry every you know i'm not gonna say that. There's stuff you're going to lean on um, that that just helps you um, and seek it out. Uh, like here at Big Brothers Big Sisters, there's a program that we have that takes our kid. You know, they're six through eighteen, mm-hmm. and now we have one that's like nineteen through twenty-five mm-hmm. because they become a young adult. Yep, that's a different type of mentorship pivot. that you need. Yes. It's a pivot, yeah. exactly, and so that is where we lose a lot of young people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they get out and if I, I got teenagers at home and I'm always asking, and hey, what you gonna do next? I don't know. Uh, you ask a high school kid right now, if he can't put a ball through a hoop, if he can't run and catch and he ain't going to military, he might, he or she might not know what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. So it's our job to put options in front of them that, that identify with things that they want to do. You know, and we get lazy as adults, especially in the school world sometimes, of trying to keep banging on that door to get that kid to see, like, hey, this is what can, this is what's waiting for you. Because two things waiting for you, positive or negative. That's it, right? You you got a plan, you work your plan, and you're going to be fine. You walk out, you walk walk across that graduation stage, you ain't got no plan, something bad going to happen. If you, something bad going to happen. You can't just sit on your mama's couch. Yeah. If she do, same on her. But, but you know, there needs to be expectation because life is waiting on you. Yes. You know, I teach these young. I try to teach young kids. Hey, man, this world out here ain't no joke. Yeah. You know, it's waiting on you, and it will eat you up if you don't yeah. have a plan. But find you a mentor. Let me go back to my work stuff. Find you a mentor um, that will help you with your trajectory of your life. Uh, we have stats here that say, uh, like if you in a mentorship program here with us at least one year, how much it changes the trajectory of your life past high school. 
Mm -hmm. Two years, it's this. Three years, it's this. Because, but that's even, it doesn't even have to be through us, but find you somebody. Mm -hmm. Find you somebody in your life that you identify with, even if it's through sports, if it's through church, if it's through uh, a civic organization that you identify with. Have some conversations and grow some accountability Mm -hmm. in that. um, And it will help you down the road. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm going to underscore a part that you said that life yeah. is waiting on you. Yeah. So I know we, we, I spend a lot of time in the mindful space and do this and the universe is going to bring these things to you. You, you got to, sometimes you got to go towards it or yeah. towards that person that is yeah. going to help, you know, give you the insight, some yeah. tools, some knowledge, some advice that is going to help you make better decisions. But Um, you know, inaction is a decision as well. So to your point around the positive or the negative, if you want the negative, do, do nothing. So no, I love the work that you all do, uh, with big brothers, big sisters. And I actually really love that you have the, um, the 19 to 25 year old program as well, because that's such a transitional period where kind of coming out of the, I'm I'm making my own decisions. I'm not always looking for somebody to tell me what to do. And, and I think, I think I think resources like this have always existed, but I think Mm -hmm. one of my missions is to make sure that people, especially those who follow and listen to me and look to the five minute career hack, that they know where to find those resources. Um, And I think you're an excellent one. Obviously, I would not plug myself. Five minute career hack is an excellent resource from a career coaching standpoint. You get a free podcast when you get to hear things, listen to it and have it be deposited into your mind. That yeah. when it when it comes time to making that decision, you're remembering something we said, and then you get to get up close and personal with big brothers, big sisters to get that personal guidance, that mentorship, mm-hmm. having, finding people that's going to speak for you in the room, right? Yeah. And and tap yeah. on your shoulder for that next opportunity. Yeah. Those are just um, opportunities that I encourage, especially the young listeners. I know I'm young too, so I know somebody my age is probably listening to this as well. This is for you too. But especially those that are in that decision making, trying to find their purpose, don't really you don't have to make all the mistakes that Kedrick and I made right? <laughs> in our career. You can I'd look to plenty, us and yeah. we're willing yeah. to be vulnerable and say, hey, I did this and it was a fail. Now oh, do this or let me help yeah. you do this to decide your purpose. But I just want them to understand the resources that are at their fingertips. Grab hold of them. No one is coming. They're not coming to you. You yeah. have to take the action to be able to properly use those resources. So yeah. again, I, I appreciate you again and the work that you do. I know that this is just the start of what five minute career hack and, and big brothers, big sisters can do together uh, for the youth that you serve, for your staff, yeah. your leaders, you. uh, because it's really, it's a community effort. Um, yes. And one of the things that we both stand for alike is uplifting our community. All day. All yes. Day. Yes. Yeah. So we've reached the end and, you know, I got that big question for you. All right. All right. All right. If you had to share five final words with the audience today, what would Mm -hmm. those five words be? Five words of encouragement that I would give. uh, Commitment and dedication create success. Mm, Commitment and dedication create success. Yeah, I. uh, Number one, I mean, the commitment is to yourself and to your work and the yeah. dedication that kind of they kind of play together. Um, you got to because ain't nobody going to believe in uh, in you but you. Yeah. You know, other folks got to see it first. They were, and You got to prove it. Um, but if you believe it and, you know, and you have your faith in yourself. And, you, you know, I'm like the imposter syndrome thing that I've, I've had to overcome. Um, the commitment dedication to know that I can do it and walk this walk yeah. and not, you know, get in my car now and go home. Like, man, I have no clue what I was doing today. Like yeah. I, you're going to have those days, but to stay committed to the process of it all mm-hmm. and dedication to, you know, if you like, if you're in a nonprofit world, most nonprofits are behind a mission or, a, you know, or some want to help some purpose. Uh, so dedication to what you're, what's important to you. Yeah. Commitment to the job and commitment to the process is one thing, but dedicating, you know, to whatever that effort is, the kind of parallel, they'll breed success uh, down the road. Uh, and it's not always in the first six months. It might take 10 years. Yeah. Uh, it might take, 
you know, 20 years, but uh, yeah. just stay committed and dedicated. Yes, absolutely. and commitment yeah. to you is paramount. I'm so glad yeah. you let in with that for yeah. sure. Yes, yeah, so Kedrick, I, I can't leave this episode without, yeah. again, thanking you, thanking you for being here today. Oh Two, man, this has been fun. As you know, I'm I'm one of the new cohorts of African American Leadership Institute. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You are now my Ali brother as well. So yeah. thank you for your work there as well. And then shout out to Ali yeah. for just cultivating an environment where leaders can thrive. Um, and yeah. I'm super excited to be a part of um, that esteemed organization. So, again, I appreciate you. And I am 100% confident that somebody who listened to this episode got a few good laughs because I know y'all saw me so. laughing throughout. <laughs> Kedrick came here as his whole self. Um, be and we definitely are coming back uh, for five more minutes with Candace because you mentioned something that I want to put a pin in for okay. the next time we chat. And that is, you mentioned it probably about three or four times and that's imposter syndrome. And mm -hmm. I think in terms of one of our missions is to make sure you can pivot in your confidence. That's an area that, I think is a lot of work that needs to be done, especially with them learning from leaders like yourself. So uh, when we come back for five more minutes, I love to dig a little deeper in that. But again, sure. I know that just the beginning of an amazing collaboration and we appreciate you being here today. For sure. I enjoyed it. I, I, anytime you need me, I got you. Yes. Yes. Same here, King Brother. So yeah. don't forget, hit the subscribe button that yes. you see on your yes. screen. He pointing to the bottom. We're going to have to make sure they put it on the bottom for you. Oh. You want to be. You want to make sure that you are made known of every time we release new episodes. We give you five minute hacks every single week that you can go and implement in your life and your career right away. And then we also bring leaders like Kedrick Orn to help impart knowledge and insight and tools and just share their journey so you can get there faster. So as always in our podcast, I love y'all and be well. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed doing it for you. However, it doesn't have to end there. Come on over to our Facebook group community right now for free. You're going to get exclusive content that we weren't able to include in this episode as well as past episodes. We've got challenges. We've got research. We've got lives. You name it all for you in bite-sized chunks so that you can continue this development journey. Go ahead, click the link right now in the description show notes, and we'll see you there.